I am so excited because the Step the Out Step TV, Out shows TV shows are back live on T2I TV. And for those who don't know, Step Out is a series of interviews and motivational segments designed to bring the best out of you and your business. Therefore, we have the following TV programs. Our first TV program, which is our flagship program, dubbed Step Out Step with, Out Oscar, with Bimpong, Oscar Bimpong, is designed to interview consultants, experts, talented people, and those doing exceptionally well in their communities. The second one is Step is Out Step SME, Out, SME, SME Focus. 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 This is where we interview business owners and showcase their products and services. The third one is Step is Out step Youth out Impact, Impact Zone. Zone. This is where we interview young people succeeding against all odds to serve as an inspiration to other young people. And the last one is Step Out Authors, Authors Corner. Corner. And this is where we interview authors to share what their book is about to the world. Join us every week. Like T2I TV on Facebook and subscribe to the YouTube channel. To advertise or for further information, do WhatsApp plus 44759-1152983 or plus 233-5580-3924 or email info at traintoinspire.com. T2I TV. We engage, educate, enlighten, and empower. empower. Welcome to another exciting edition of the Step Out with Oscar Bimpon Show. And tonight, as usual, we are bringing you something inspirational, something so powerful that you need for you to succeed in this life. And trust me, if you are watching us, there is one thing I want us to do. Share this for somebody to have an opportunity to watch this program. And also like our page on Facebook, T2ITV UK, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's going to be fireworks tonight. My guest is already seated. She's fired up. And trust me, if you are down, if you think it's not possible, if you think that you cannot make it, if you think that life is too difficult, you need to really watch this program. Or cause somebody that all these things that I've mentioned, they are going to let them join us. Because trust me, after today's program, your mindset will change you will be moving to a different dimension where your life will be a success. Now, before I go on to my guest, I just want to mention a few of our sponsors. This program is sponsored by Train to Inspire Consultancy. T2Y TV UK comes from the word Train to Inspire. And Train to Inspire is for all your business training and consulting firm. Also, we work with schools, colleges, and universities in terms of the personal development of students. In terms of your business, talk to us. In terms of your training and development, talk to us. In terms of consulting to help you to strategically position your business in the marketplace, talk to us. Also, ZPay Ghana Limited, your remittance and mobile money company based in Ghana. ZPay just launched their USSD code and that is star 270 hash. Just dial it on your phone and register for ZPay Mobile Money. Now, ZPay says you don't need a third party to register for mobile money. Just at the dial of star 270 hash, your, 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 your mobile money will be, um, um, it will be downloaded on your phone. That is your USSD code. Use it to register for ZPay mobile money. Now, if you want to contact any of these sponsors, their contact details are scrolling on the screen. Take them and contact them. Also, if you want to sponsor any of our shows or you want to support what we are doing, take the number for T2Y TV UK or Train to Inspire Consultancy and let us talk. Now, tonight is going to be a powerful discussion. 
share this for somebody to join us. Drop this link on WhatsApp. Drop it somewhere in a group. Drop it somewhere on your page. Tag somebody for them to join us for tonight's program. Now, who do I have on the host seat? There is a saying that life finds at what we are trapped. And for some reason, I connected with this lady just because of this program. And since then, we have been building synergy. And she is the kind of woman that I've really learned a lot from. And sometimes there are certain things that you do that people learn from you, but they don't come to tell you that they are learning from you. Sometimes you are inspiring some people, but they don't come back to tell that you are inspiration to them. And these are some of the reasons why some people give up. Because some people always want a thank you before they realize that they are doing well. But trust me, there are so many people that are silent, but they are being impacted by your works. And who is our guest for tonight? She is a wife, she is a mother, and a nurse by profession. She is in a person of Teresa Mu Chukuma. Please welcome to Step Out with Oscar Bipo and you're live on T2Y TV UK. Thank you, thank you. Welcome, Oscar, and thank you for having me on your show tonight. Wow, it's been a long Very time. Most of the time, you have been a spectator, but today you are on the field, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. And I'm glad to be here with you tonight and with our audience wow. as well. How has your day been? My day has been pretty good, yes. Relaxing and, uh, you know, preparing as well. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go straight to business. It's a Saturday and we need the rest of the day for ourselves, but we have decided to be here. And let's go straight to business. Our topic is based on this book. And that is Mindset Revolution, Re-Engineering Your Mind from Prison to Purpose. To be honest, yes. the kind of feedbacks that I'm getting from this book is so amazing. And it has really cost me. You know, sometimes you are doing certain things, but sometimes you are not sure. It's like people don't give you feedback. So sometimes it's like, uh, is it a good book? But the kind of feedbacks that I have got now, it has really settled me that I'm, 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 I'm just saying to myself that this book should be a bestseller somewhere. I don't know how. Because one, one guy who bought the book sent me a message. And he said, look, if Jim Rohn was alive, he would have signed this book. You know? And these are the kind of things that is really inspiring me. So today we are going to talk about the book. And our topic is how the Mindset Revolution book has really impacted your life. So let, let's go straight to business. Who is Teresa Chukuma in your own words? In my own words, I'm a, um, a mother, a nurse by profession, a caring person, and somebody who is a learner. So the utmost of me really is somebody who's always willing to learn, who's ready to learn from anyone, because I believe that with learning, you can um, nurture a very healthy mind to progress in life. So I'm a learner, wow. always learning. And you know, when, when I autographed your book, that is what I wrote in the book, that yes. you, you yearn to learn, right? Where did you cultivate that culture from? The culture of learning. The culture of learning, I would say from my childhood when I was growing up, because uh, my dad has always been a, an inspiration. He's uh, someone who is always reading, who always does well in his career pathway. If he starts any job before he finishes, he'll be a principal. For example, he was a teacher and he became a head teacher before he retired, went into agriculture. So I aspired, what, how is this man able to have this sort of mindset? So then I realized that he didn't just sit back he was reading and he was nurturing the things that he had and that's helped helped him a lot to progress and to be ahead in everything that he did he always became the head of everything that he did 
Mm. It was never just like a supervisor. He became like the owner, if you like, like the boss. Mm. Yes. So, so I hope say that. Yeah. So, so does it mean that when you were young, what you saw your father doing has really impacted your life, right? Yes. A lot of the positives that he did has actually um, to drive as well to be somebody who's always willing and ready to work hard as well as learn to cultivate healthy habits so how what, what do you think we can do to help children to really cultivate the right mindset because this book is about trying to cultivate the right mindset how can we get children to really from day one have that right mindset needed for them to succeed and thrive in the marketplace or in life in general we need to start by showing them examples ourselves at home you know um talking is good but action is best than talking mm. so if you're at home you need to um learn but you need to begin by cultivating a, even from childhood you know teaching them little things and you also having that studious uh, uh, life you know by someone who's uh, reading or who is doing things around that could you learn to cultivate healthy habits? So if you're, um, and the words that you speak at home, so be mindful of the words that you're using at home around children. You know, don't just speak anyhow, mind your words. And if you promise to do something, learn to do those things. So the children will, will begin to take accountability that they are living with parents that are trustworthy, that goes by, go by their word. So if they say, for example, tonight we're going to take you out, and if you can't do it, explain to them why you haven't done it. Encourage them to read books, books from their age, so they can cultivate that habit wherein they learn to read books, and that book will shape their mind, not just any kind of book, books that are going to direct them into, um, you know, something that will broaden their mind, that would make them not to be limited. So they believe in that, uh, they have that self-belief building up as they are growing. So in and around the home, what you do, how you teach them. Yes. Mm. You made a powerful statement that is talking is good, but action is best, right? So yes. a, a lot of a lot of parents are talking, but they are not taking action. And if they are talking and they are not taking action, what impact does it have on the children? It, it has a negative impact on the children because the children will see that their parents are just telling them to do one thing and the other and they themselves are not trying because even with my daughter and I'm not trying to say I'm not seeing you stopping to use your phone so if you want me to not be on the phone all the time can I see some examples I'm like I'm your mom I'm busy sending emails and things and she realizes mm. so they're watching us in essence to see what we're saying if we're acting on those things that we're telling them not to do and to do are we taking any steps ourselves how are ways how are ways the ways that we see how does it impact our life and how does it impact our mindset did you hear me uh, no there was a bit of a glitch but i think you were asking about words how yeah, they impact so, our yeah, lives. So, yeah how does words impact our lives wow Words are very powerful. They have a, a lot of impact on our lives because according to your book, which I'm going to start drifting in the book now, the mindset, <laughs> uh, mindset revolution and re-engineering uh, purpose. So words are very powerful because um, the mind has two components to it. It has the, um, the brain and it has a mind and most people intertwine them and believe that they are one they are not really one they have different functions in as much as they uh, are interchangeable so the mind in itself and the and the brain they feed on each other so if you compare them to a computer the uh, brain is the uh, box and the mind is the software which is what you input to go into the hardware which as we have said is the brain which is a physical so if you know that the mind so the mind is the gateway that allows word and filters word in so you have to, words are very powerful because when words 
come through the mind as a wear, which is the software, and it's going to be lodged into the hardware, which is the brain. If you're not mindful of the words that you're speaking, even to yourself and to others, especially to yourself, they will begin to take root in the hardware. And that would be a very difficult scenario if you don't paint the right word, if you don't have the, the right words. So words are powerful. We should be mindful of our words. Words are very powerful. We should be mindful of our words. And, and I think we take it for granted. Sometimes there are certain words that we say, there are certain things that we say that we don't really think about it deeply because they have been programmed, they are automatic. We don't really think twice to say them. How does those words really destroy our lives? Those words can either cause us to be failures or to succeed in life. And, you know, if you, they will cause uh, limiting beliefs. If you're not mindful, because if you're used to saying that, um, I don't do things right, I'm always failing at uh, um, things, I've tried and I don't succeed, you're beginning to build in that pattern in your subconscious you're beginning to build it it's entering through your conscious mind and it's going through the hardware which is the subconscious and you're beginning to save them in there when you save those words they will play a pattern and they will repeat so anytime you're faced with challenges you will say i'm a loser i cannot do it and they will have a negative impact on your life wow now tell me tell me your 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 own experience after reading the book, if somebody says, look, are you going to recommend this book? What is it about? What are you going to tell them about the book? I will recommend this book to every family. For me, I'm a Christian. So next to my Bible now, I have Oscar Bing Paul's book <laughs> next to me as my daily devotion. So when I wake up in the morning and I read Proverbs or any other scriptures in John, I would, when I finish, I would look, take a look at inspire me for that day to not give up this book is a book that will set you on fire it will make you see what your vision in life is because first when you understand that your mind yes the the uh, mind yeah mindsets re uh, revolution it would engineer it will re-engineer your mind from prison to purpose so i would say everyone needs this book because the mind is a place that you can be in prison it's even worse than the physical prison that people are put into you know solitary in front uh, you know you are in fine in the uh, solitary place where you cannot see people but in your mind you can also lock yourself up by not seeing the right things that you should see in life. And if you do that, it's an imprisonment. This book frees you. It gives you spat, it gives you quite a lot of things to help you realize what you should be watchful about and what you should quickly reject and the things that you should take in. So it's a very powerful book. It's got 12 mm -hmm. chapters been going through it. And, and you mentioned about the prison. And you know, I, 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 a lady, I gave a lady a copy of the book. And mm -hmm. she said, are you talking about physical prison? Is the book for prisoners? <laughs> but I think this is where people get it wrong. You see, the psychology of the mind is, 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 is very, very, um, is, 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 I don't know how to say it, but it's something that we don't pay attention to, but it's destroying our lives. You know, absolutely. Now, if if you are that person that at the beginning of the year you have New Year resolutions, you will set goals, and you are not able to achieve it at the end of the year. You start one thing today, you give up tomorrow to go and start another thing mm -hmm. today give up and go and start another thing so at the end of the year you have got so much unfulfilled task in your hands what i want you to understand is that your mind is in prison whatever you pursue that you don't have the freedom you don't have the power you don't have the concentration to succeed you don't have the grit the tenacity to succeed it means that your mind is in prison and trust me, many people, their minds are in prison. Why? Because they start wanting today and they give up and they go and start something new. Thinking that what they are starting now is going to be easier. And there is no easy route to success. 
And this is where I want people to understand that if you want the liberation of the mind, then you need to read this book. This is the book that you need to liberate your mind, to take you from that prison of the mind to a purposeful. You see, the person that is even in prison, the person that is in prison doesn't mean that their minds are in prison. You see, some people are in prison, that is physical prison, but their minds are not in prison. Some people have got freedom, but their minds are in, in prison. That is why somebody can come from prison and come into the real world, become very successful, but the person that has never been to prison is struggling. It's all in the mind, the programming of the mind. That is what Pascal is saying here. Brilliant, brilliant program, keep going. The programming of the mind is very dangerous. So now let me ask you, in the past, were there certain things that you were doing that always you give up? Were you that type? Have you been in that position before? Um, I'm someone who strives to uh, keep moving forward and keep pushing at things. And I don't really believe in giving up. But I have started some things or thought of some things that I didn't pursue. You know, so there are some stuff that I, I, I thought of, but I really did not push forward for them as I should have uh, pushed forward to do them. Yes. What were some but, of the stumbling blocks? Uh, some of the stumbling blocks is just uh, thinking that, oh, it's uh, difficult to do or uh, not having help or timing, not ready. I'll put it off to do it, you know, another day. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Wow, wow. And I think these are some of the things that really stops people from achieving their goal. Oh, it's very difficult. Oh, for example, if you have got scenarios in the past, oh, my uncle did it, it didn't work. My mom did it, it didn't work. What do you think if I do it, it's going to work, right? I've learned, I've seen a lot of people that, look, I'm, I'm, I'm into some business now, right? And when I talk to people about their business, mm -hmm they don't want to join, right? But if I tell you how much I've been blessed out of that business, <laughs> I was telling one of my friends that, look, I brought this thing to you. It doesn't really, you don't need to think twice to do this thing. And you have never taken the chance to do it. And I just showed him what I've been able to achieve out of it. And he was like, wow. Mm -hmm. Now, what am I trying to say? If in your subconscious mind, you have always programmed your mind that things are always difficult. There is one thing you always do. You always push opportunities away. Yes. When opportunity comes your way, the first thing is to find a reason why that opportunity is not possible. And that one brings me to my question of our thought patterns. How can we develop the right thought patterns that is going to align with opportunities? Yes, if you want to, uh, you have to listen to the inner small voice because there are two voices within everyone. There's a loud voice that is the impossibility mindset that quickly comes up first when you face your face with the hoddle, which you described very well in your book, you know, and you'll be, uh, it would tell you that it's not possible and give you all the excuses that um, no one in your community, for example, has succeeded at this. Who do you think you are? But there's that small voice and that voice that tells you that is the comfort zone mentality, mm. you know, so you, it would make you to sit on the couch to make excuses. But there's another voice which makes you to go out of your comfort zone. So that's the logic mindset. And then there's the active mindset which move you from comfort zone to uncomfortable zone and to begin to make the um, take the action that you need to take to progress and to have a limit a factor in your head that does not limit you to start making excuses you believe that i can do i will it is possible mm. you know the impossibility mindset comes out and you become the i am possible mindset and all of those are in the book this book is full of so many nuggets i could there's so many nuggets i've written which uh, we're not going to be able to say them all but this is a very rich book it's good it cuts across for everyone children adults somebody who has been procrastinating
it's in a physical prison. It also even helps some people who are going through depression because the book is so good, it's encouraging. So it's not just for um, financial gain, it can also help you physically mm -hmm. to get well, holistically, it covers a whole lot of areas. So, so you want to say that even if somebody is going through depression and you read this book, it's going to help them, right? I have never, thought, I have never, thought, I have never thought from that angle anyway. A one hundred percent. I'm certain, because you will begin to to bring in positive thoughts, and it will give you good feelings, and that will begin be a point of starting to be healed. A hundred percent. Wow. Now, Kweku Sinti Mensa has asked a question, right? And he says, mm. when people start something, do it for several years, and then stop it entirely to start another thing altogether. Is it a good thing? Wow, for several years and then they stop it and start again. Why why they have to look into the whys, but why they stopped it in the first place? Was it that was it the right vision that they started? Mm -hmm. You know, they have to look into things like that. Is it purpose driven? Because for you to be purpose driven, you have to have a vision that's going to keep you awake, mm. that no difficult situation will make you to stop. Mm. So if sometimes people start things and they stop because in the first place, it wasn't really the thing that they should have started. Mm. They may have started it because their neighbors are doing it mm. or because their friends have started it and then they jumped into it. Without to work. So that could be some of the reasons why people start and fail. But if it's something that you have passion and your vision, your thought process would make you in, it would engineer your mind for you to keep pushing mm. and you would find the right information to keep you going. Mm, mm, mm. Wow, wow, wow. But to me, to add to that, I think you have answered it perfectly because why did you start in the first place? And trust me, people get bored, right? I know, I know stories of people that are working in the city for so many years earning five figure income six figure income and they wake up one day and they say they are fed up right and they start something new it, it all depends you know sometimes we do certain things that we are not passionate about but sometimes we stick around for a long time because that thing is probably paying the bills or we are getting the money or maybe even the environment that you are working you are working in you like the people that you are working with and because of that you stick around for a long time but it reaches a time probably you say no enough is enough i want to move on right and people do move on and i don't think there is anything wrong with it people do move yeah. on you see probably maybe i might not be doing this tv for the rest of my life maybe Maybe I will venture into serious consulting, doing other projects, is doing inspiring people in different aspects as well. But that doesn't mean that probably I, I, I don't like what I do. But sometimes we move on to a higher mm -hmm. level. We move on to a different realm. We move on to a different level where we believe that probably the impact is going to be more. So I think, look, you. It, and the best way to even stop is if you are not getting the results and you are still doing it. It doesn't make sense. Why do you continue to do something that you are not getting results? So I think your question, I think there is nothing wrong, but it depends on the circumstances behind it. Now, let, 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 me, let me go into this book. A, a lot of people have got fixed mindset, right? Because they believe that they, they 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 believe that one plus one should be equal to two. So when I tell them one plus one can also be ten, they will argue. How can we <laughs> that growth mindset? Mm. Sorry, there was a breakage. So what I'm trying to say is that how yeah. how can people get the growth mindset? Because oh, right. a lot of people have been fixated that one yeah. plus one should be equal to two. So when we tell them one plus one is equal to 10, they will argue mm -hmm. with you. How can people get that growth mindset? They can, uh, they can, re uh, program, the, they can reprogram their mind to uh, a growth mindset. A growth mindset is a mindset that thinks out mm -hmm. of the box. Mm -hmm. 
It's a mindset that does not believe in self-limiting uh, abilities. It's a mindset that is willing to try. A growth mindset can also answer the question that the young man uh, Kwaku asked, uh, asked just now. So like you said, you can evolve and move for forward as long as you're not stopping. A logic mindset is when you say one plus one is more than two and you hit the ceiling, the glass ceiling, you don't go further. It paralyzes people and it keeps people grounded. Mm -hmm. But a growth mindset is a mindset that says, despite the odds, I am relentless. Mm -hmm. Despite the odds, I must go forward. Mm -hmm. Despite the odds, there's a new way out. Despite the odds, I'll try a new venture. Mm -hmm. It's a mindset that doesn't give up, that has no room for self-limiting beliefs. It's a mindset that says i can do all things everything is possible and i'm having i'm not giving up on any opportunity i'm opening myself up for opportunities and i am a solution center that sort of mindset that's a growth mindset wow, 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 wow. and do people have that fighting spirit how can people get that fighting spirit because i think a lot of people don't even start and those that start they give up too soon and the very few, very few persist and persevere. How can people get that fighting spirit? That fighting spirit is from knowing your purpose, really, like we've been uh, saying. When you know your purpose in life and you have made up your mind to say, this is what I'm determined to achieve, you could just be somebody who's inspiring others to encourage them to move on. It could be in a business uh, uh, aspect. It could be with children. First, try and uh, re-engineer your mind by bringing in the right thoughts in. But then, when you're bringing in the right thoughts, it would give you the, pos the, the pos positive mindsets for you not to give up. And then you find a purpose that you're looking, you, you, you want to move into. Once you have identified that purpose, it would give you the encouragement and the tenacity to keep going. Yeah. Most people give up because first, they have not really identified what their purpose is in life. So that's one of the reasons why people give up. There are physical challenges, you know, finance and everything, but these are all uh, um, tangible things and intangible things. The real thing is what you put in your mind. Once your mind is formed, you have made your mind and your mind is determined. It would be very hard for you to just give up on things in life. Even when they are difficult, you'll find a way out. You'll find a solution. Because you made mention about the physical things, right? And there is one thing I've heard people say. I don't have the money to start the business. Mm -hmm. I don't have nobody to support me. I don't have the resources. And because of that, so and you see, I meet a lot of people based on my travels in my inspirational speaking engagements and in my trainings. And I can meet somebody today in five years, if I meet that person, when I meet that person five years ago, he was so enthused, he was so passionate about starting a vision. Then I meet the same person in five years and that vision is still in the dreamy stage. And that person is talking about, I didn't have a, somebody promised me, but they did not deliver. I didn't have money, so much excuses. How can people really move and believe and start from somewhere? Yes, <laughs> you can start from where you are. Yes, you can. Um, the, the thing is, you have to act. Even if you have all this information given to you and the information that is in the book with you, so enriching you have to start from somewhere if you don't do anything not doing anything is equal to zero you have to start from somewhere to be able to test yourself and know that you can do it even if you're failed you still need to try something else and keep moving because otherwise you would not be able to do anything and it's not just to do with business even with your life in your personal life because if you failed in one area maybe in raising your children or marriage you don't have to say oh i'm a failure this never works for me you still need to, to keep going because as long as you're alive, you still need to be moving on. You cannot be grounded and have self-limiting beliefs. The self-limiting beliefs is the main stronghold that's stopping people from trying again. 
of course sometimes you have bitter experiences but they should still not hold you from moving on because if you ground yourself then you're not going to try anyway mm -hmm. if you ground yourself then you are not going to try anyway because i i i i, I think in our generation too our excuses make sense and our excuses are so emotional and people will come and say teresa you don't know what it takes you don't understand what i'm going through you know you 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 you, you are you just you are thinking it's easy like people have got so much excuses that really makes sense now when your excuses make sense and because of that you don't you don't really push on your vision then how can you succeed yes um if you follow your excuses it would lead to failure so to succeed in life you have to put this the excuses to one side the pain to one side and thrive and keep pushing is the only way your vision is going to succeed. So there are two mindsets. There's one mindset of the impossibility and there's one mindset of the possibility. The reason why I keep returning back to mindset because everything really starts from within. So if you work on your mindset within yourself and make your mindset tough, it doesn't mean that challenges would not come. But you would have that rich mindset to say, regardless of the challenges, I'll dust off my feet, I would move on, I would cry, do what you have to do. Prepare, 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 because when opportunities come, you'll be ready. But you have to have a strong, sound mindset with tenacity for you to be able to progress in life. Excuses would not help anyone. The more you make excuses, the more time is going, and the more you're being delayed, and the more age will come, and you'll regret. In the, in the, in, at the end of the day, there'll be regrets if you did nothing, because you've because the, the, this, the season was not right or because you were so uncomfortable you could not make a decision. Now, what is one thing that you have learned from this book that you think it is going to stay with you forever in life? The diamond mindset. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you spoke about the, 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 the uh, you had a lot of analogies in this book. You spoke about the, uh, diamond mindset which i needed to have had open uh i don't have this open now. anyway but you spoke about the diamond mindset which is a mindset that is so rich through the different through when you've worked onto your progressive mind so your mind has become like a diamond field which is so rich that you can dig dig, dig into that mind all the time to bring out what you need so in essence if you need resources for like you haven't got a resource you haven't got the finances when you work on your mindset you will begin to attract you will get the like bigger like and you begin to attract those finances so it's you don't have to work on the physical things first to say i need the finance i need the money i need the people work first on your mindsets that's what you called you like into the diamond mindset because when you work on your mind you would attract the resources the physical things that you're looking for they would come into your life but first you have to work on your mind then it'll be like my like begets like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there is a statement that when i was writing this book mm -hmm. it has stuck with me and that is work on your mind before you work on your vision yes you see? um and I, I think a lot of people do it the other way around they rather work on the vision neglecting their mind and that is that that is the that is the source of failure of a lot and lots and lots of people because you see there is one thing about resources resources can be scarce today but they can be abundant tomorrow now yes. when you have got abundance of resources it might seem your mindset doesn't matter. But then when you have got scarce resources, then your mindset is everything. But then when people get abundance of resources and they lose their resources, because they have never got the opportunity to really harness the scarce resources at their disposal and turn it into abundance, that is where they fail. That is where they settle in their comfort zone. So in the book, I talked about the there are two types of poor people. A poor person with a poor mindset and a poor person with a rich mindset. 
these are two different people. The one, a poor person with a poor mindset, believes that they are born to be poor and that there are no opportunities. The system is created for some few people. The government and the resources are not just for them. In their family, probably nobody has really risen to a certain level. So they have accepted that they are born to be poor. Then you have got a poor person with a rich mindset. That is the person that believes that though they are born poor, but they are not supposed to die poor. And there are people like that. They have got nothing at the moment, but they believe that it's a temporal situation. They can change that mindset and really succeed in life. And those people, when you are speaking to them, they have got nothing, but they have got the belief that life will turn around one day. And they start working towards it. And I believe that a lot of people who are poor have got a poor mindset. What do you think? I totally agree. A lot of people who have who are poor have got a poor mindset, and just as you've uh, rightly put it, they have believed they have placed self-limiting beliefs on them that the system is not fair, that life is hard, that everything they do is a struggle, and they never amount to anything. What they are failing to realize is that this has been embedded in their subconscious mind, and it plays out. So, because they have placed those self-limiting beliefs on themselves, that begins to play out naturally it, it's just like when we are born we there's a, a genetic mindset from what we we inherit from our family like i give the example the, the way i saw my dad and some of those mindsets i cultivate now and i'm working on to them to even be like how he was so um hard working but people have built such a negative mindset not realizing it's been settled into their subconscious mind and also from their environment which is the environmental mindset that people pick from what they see what they hear what they smell and taste and they've put those boundaries and they believe that they are not going to break forth so if you have put those beliefs in your mind it doesn't matter if when the money comes you will still ruin the money because you have believed in yourself unless you begin to change that narrative money would not solve the situation the money will come you would lose it because you haven't got the ability to hold the money you have a poor mindset which is a negative mindset so yes wow 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 you know, when the conversation is good, time really runs fast, right? Mm -hmm. And that is what I always say. I think I've got some few comments here. I have got uh, Harrietta saying hi. I've got mm -hmm. Lemon Flory saying very true. Lemon Flory saying cheers, Lady Teresa Mo. And she's also saying greetings, Master Oscar. And mm -hmm. she also says less action causes a lot of negative impact. And she also says words are powerful. So we have to be careful how we speak what we speak. And also I've got Pascal Navel saying brilliant program, keep going. And I've got Koku Sinti mentioning saying, who do you, uh, when people start something, do it for several years and then stop it entirely to start another thing altogether. Is it a good thing? Yes, I think we have answered that question. Now, what, what is the highlight? If somebody asks you, I want to buy this book, why should I buy it? What are you going to tell them? Wow. I'm going to tell them that uh, it doesn't matter where you are in your mindset. So if you have a growth mindset or a logic mindset, it doesn't matter. This book can re-engineer your mind from prison to purpose. It would make you to um, put doubt to one side. It would make you to work on your purpose. It will show you steps how to cultivate healthier uh, mindsets by putting a gateway to your thought process it all begins from the thoughts if you were if you are someone who has been thinking negatively it would help you to begin to rewire your mind to think positively because positive outcomes positive beliefs would lead to positive outcomes yes so everyone must get this book and read it wow positive beliefs leads to positive outcomes and there is one thing I, I always say to people that, look, you cannot think negative and have a positive life. 
neither can you think positive and not succeed in life because the foundation of your success or failure starts in the mind there are so many people who have already failed in their mind and that is the reason why it is not really their success is not coming forth in real life so we have to work on our minds if we want to succeed now before we go how can we work on our minds what are some of the things that we have to do to work on our minds so that we can succeed in this life wow well, we have to make our mind um, we have to have a gateway in our mind so when a process comes through we have to filter those processes if the process is a negative one the thoughts that you're feeling is negative try to discard those and replace them with a positive one because um like we've been saying all throughout the end results the thoughts that you're having if you're if you don't have a gateway to checkmate it to bring in the good ones the negative ones will overwhelm the good ones because it, according to uh, oscar's book 95 percent of our mind it's the subconscious and five percent is the conscious so the conscious is what we drive things into the subconscious so if you saw a lot of negativity 95 percent of you is working in just a very bad way so you need to do everything that you can to begin to bring in only those things that are going to be profitable anything that is not going to to show up in your future as good disregard it fast and replace it with that which you need to make you progress and be successful in life mm, mm, mm. because I, I i think i wrote something in the book about you know the mind is the most fertile soil in the world right yes now whatever you sow on the mind it is going to grow it it is going to nurture it and it is going to give you the best right so if you sow negative thoughts it is going to nurture it and give you a negative results and if you sow positive so thoughts it is going to nurture it now if you decide not it will even sow anything on the mind it's like the soil if you mm -hmm. decide not to really grow good seeds on the soil weeds will take over the soil yes. it's the same thing with the mind if you mm -hmm. refuse not to put whether positive or negative thoughts there are thoughts that will grow in on the mind you see the mind is just so fertile you see w w let me give you a scenario right when i've got a good seed but the soil is not fertile the seed will not germinate when i have got a very good soil but the seed is not good still the seed will not germinate now meaning that for the seed to germinate you need a very good soil and a viable seed for the seed to germinate now the mind is different for the mind whether it is positive thoughts or negative thoughts it is going to grow it and that is how dangerous it is and there is one thing about the mind that i wrote in the book that the memory bank of your subconscious does not have any limitation so when you look at the 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 the, the computer hardware they say oh it has got five gig it has got one terabyte memory right but with the mind mm -hmm. because Teresa, have you have you seen anybody that says my mind is full before that i want to delete some things <laughs> the mind is ready to no. accommodate anything that you feed with so if you consistently if you are 40 years mm. now if you are 15 years now and you have been consistently be feeding your mind with the negatives of life trust me you have got the biggest empire of negative thoughts in your life and such a person if you are not successful forget it you are not going to be successful until you start the re-engineering of your mind from prison to purpose and i think this is what a lot lot of people need to work on we need to work on our minds and until we are able to do that there is no way success is going to knock out our door yes 
the, um, the battlefield is in the mind. The battlefield is in the mind. That's where a lot of people are losing the battle. They have proposed in their hearts and their mind has decided that they cannot go beyond certain. They have put self-limiting beliefs. They've decided I cannot go beyond this. And I like the analogy that you use with the swell and the uh, the fertile swell being the, being the mind. You know, so if you put good things in it, you would yield. You would harvest. You spoke about harvesting. Mm -hmm. You would harvest that which you have sown, mm -hmm. and then that the mind can never be blank. So you have to purposefully determine and look for good things to put in your mind. Because if you, if people read this book and they begin to re-engineer their mind by taking the steps which you have outlined in the book as well, there's lots and lots of nuggets. We cannot cover them all. So many nuggets. This book is so rich. If if every day you just pick one nugget, just one by by um, blocking your mind, not blocking by um, not allowing your mind to sow negativity. So if anything negative comes, you try and and like a weed, you try and pluck things that are good. If any, you begin at that point, that is a way forward. You'd begin to declutter as you were because you can reprogram your mind. You can change the negative narratives by putting in the positives, and you will definitely sow the good. You will reap the harvest in a good way. Wow, 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 wow. Now, look, it's almost like five five minutes to uh, the top of the hour. And look, the discussion is so good. Time really runs fast. Sometimes when I bring people to the show, they say like one hour, but if it's a mm -hmm. good discussion, you never see the time. Now, Teresa, people are watching us and people are going to watch this interview. Now, what are you going to tell them for them to get this book because i have got to the stage where i've realized that if the mind is not set right nothing is going to work in our lives so what experience what have you read from the book that you want to tell people that are watching us that they should go for this book and build that strong foundation that they need to succeed in life Yes, everyone watching this uh, uh, program should go for this book. Get one book per household and see what's going to happen. Your mind's going to be transformed. Get this uh, Mindset Revolution by Oscar Bimpo. He's done a great job with this book. He uh, works on it. He starts off by uh, chapter one and two talking about... Um, you know the mindset that we develop from when we are born which is uh, can be transferred from our from our family which is genetically and then he also spoke about environmental mind and then he 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 went through it and he spoke about negativity positivity prison you know the, the uh, actual physical prison and then lots of people as we've been going through we've realized that are struggling and they are making new uh, new year's resolutions and not fulfilling the new new year's resolution and i'm wondering why am i not fulfilling my new year's resolution it's not the fact that you have not been able to make a resolution it's the fact that you have not been able to decide and because the reason why you can not making a decision is failure in itself the reason why many people find it difficult to to make decision or to keep their head above water as they were is because of the programming that the mind has been set to so you need this book to begin to we program your mind with the possibility mindset, the I can do mindset, I am not a failure. All these nuggets are in this book, how you can work your way out of prison for purpose. So this is a powerful book. Well done, Mr. Oz. Thank you, and I'm humbled. I just hope that this book will go all around the world and it would reach people like Oprah who can have a, their, their mm. fingerprints on this book and get it circulated. Amen. It's a top-notch book. It's really good because if we don't reprogram our minds, we are most liable to be limited, failure and not to go beyond fatting levels because of self-limiting beliefs. So thank you. Wow. wow. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you. Thank you very much. And there is one thing that you said that I feel like I'm so blessed and that is you have got this book on the side of your Bible. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, I'm blessed, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm really blessed. I'm really blessed. And But before we go, you can get this book at Amazon. Get this book at Amazon. Look, I always say this. This book is cheaper than large pizza. 
this book is cheaper than a bucket of KFC, invest in your mind for once, right? Get your children to read this book. Try to really channel their mind on positivity at a young age. And this is the only reason that we do. I always say that the, the most powerful legacy you can leave or the most powerful inheritance that you can leave for your children is not what you are quite physically, but a mindset that you are going to develop that when the storm rages, when life becomes difficult, they understand that this is a season. I will battle it and overcome. And over time, I am going to win it. That is the most powerful legacy you can leave for your children. Because if you don't build the right mindset and you live with them all the riches in the world, sometimes you are likely to even destroy their lives. Why? Because if they are not able to handle the resources, the resources will handle them and destroy their lives. And that is why you have got a lot of rich people whose children are into drugs, whose children are into alcoholism, why? Because their mindset were not trained to handle the resources that they have. So it's very important that you get this book. This book is a must have. This book must get into every home. It must get into every church. This book must get into every organization. Look, I, I'm, I'm so blessed, Teresa. I'm so blessed. Because you see, when people call me to thank me that and even you see, some people have not even finished reading the book and they are calling me mm. to, to thank me. He said, I'm on chapter two. Look, this book. And, and, and some people have started ordering this book for other people. They are they have ordering it for other friends and family. Because you see, if you only have the right mindset and your family members don't have the right mm -hmm. mindset, <laughs> there is still a problem, you know? So we should have that mindset that we need to succeed where i am in life there is no way i can fail where i am in terms of my mindset there is no way i can fail time cannot cause me to fail lack of resources cannot cause me to fail somebody telling me no cannot cause me to fail somebody saying that oscar is not possible cannot cause me to fail because i have developed the right mental state the right mentality that I believe in what I'm doing. You see, you are the visionary, you are the career of the vision. So you should understand the vision better than anybody else. When I started this journey, some people were laughing, but today they cannot laugh. Why? Because we have really break certain boundaries. We have conquered certain territories where we don't really sometimes need to even talk too much because our works are there there is one thing that i always tell people that don't defend your vision with your works defend your vision with your works because your works speaks better than your ways and your works are there for everyone to see sometimes when i go to ghana and i visit a tv station they are like, what have you done that we should give you opportunity to come on this TV station? There is only one answer I give them. Google my name, and if you are convinced about what you see, let's continue the discussion. It makes it easier for me. Because now, if you Google my name, you can have over 30 pages of Oscar Bimpo. Why? Because I have put in the work over a decade. I want you to understand that you can also do the same thing. All I want you to do is to work on this mind. Get this mind to a state where you have the belief that it doesn't matter what is surrounding you. You are still a winner and you are going to work towards to become that winner that you are born to be. I want you to get a copy of this book. For those of you who are in Ghana, we are working on printing some copies in Ghana. And we are also working on having a book launch in Ghana. So we are going to update you very soon. I know people are calling me in Ghana. So much context messages, inboxes mm -hmm. on Messenger, and they want the book. 
just have a little patience with us and we are going to come out and, and really <laughs> supply you with all that you need so thanks very much god richly bless you teresa i have got some comment from lemon flory mm -hmm. saying mindset needs to be trained indeed and she also says the power of resilience the power of resilience you need to have a resilient spirit now teresa your last word to everyone that is watching us uh, <laughs> we cannot overemphasize the power of the mind cultivate a healthy mindset go the extra mile to develop your mind with good things you know uh, be positive be resilient and there's one thing that uh, oscar said that there will be challenges but if you and even rich people have not been able to overcome those challenges hence their children give up or you know the stories that we hear there on drugs pornography or a lot of other things that they shouldn't be in. but if you cultivate that mindset that the season is temporal everything that every challenge that comes is for a season you would overcome that season if you have built resilience and you have built a positive mind the i can do mindset will help you and you'd always make it and prosper but first it starts with the mind and that's why we have this book here which is going to help us to cultivate that mindset, the mindset revolution, which you can get from Amazon or you can contact Mr. Oscar Bimpo himself on his uh, Facebook and uh, T2I, T2I television and he will be able to send a signed copy for you. God bless us. God bless you Thank and you. God bless you more for your time. As she said, get it on Amazon. And also I've got some copies I can send if you are living in the UK or maybe in the States, you want us to send you a signed copy, we can do that as well. It's been wonderful having yes. you, Teresa. Most of the times you'll be the one here commenting, but today you are on the hot seat. Thanks very much for your time. <laughs> God bless you. And God bless you. Yes, and I Good think night. I have Ot Koyama saying you. thanks for the enormous lessons in our positive mindset for development. Yes. Guess one should be steadfastly consistent, even if they may be a minimum percentage of flexibility. Needs to have this powerful, knowledgeable book. God bless you. Please inbox me and you can have a copy. Thank you very much. God richly bless everyone. We are here on Tuesday, 8 p.m. for another powerful discussion. If you are watching us for the first time, like our page and subscribe to our YouTube channel and also share this for somebody to have an opportunity to watch this program. Don't change the dial. We'll be coming back. We are here every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, 8 p.m. BST, that is British Summertime, and 7 p.m. GMT. Thank you very much.